and he has nothing to, to get the water out. And he's on his own in the middle of the day. And to be honest, at that time of day, you wouldn't expect other people to be around. Because if you're going to go to the well to collect water for your village, what time of day are you going to go? Well, you're going to go at the beginning of the day for several reasons, but, but also because actually that's the coolest part of the day. And what would happen normally at this well, at the beginning of the day, the whole community would have gone off to the well together to get water. I'm guessing it would be a time to catch up, to share news, um, to journey together. It would be much safer to travel together and then travel back and start your day together. But here, Jesus in the middle of the day, suddenly someone else comes up and joins him. And it's a lone woman. Now I need to give you some context to the story. Some of it's kind of intimated in this story, but, but if you really understand the, something of the culture and the society of the day, you'll find out that actually this is a, a very strange occurrence. For one thing, men and women in this society were separated by all sorts of customs, all sorts of do's and don'ts. And in fact, men were not expected to be seen in the company of, of women on their own without their husbands. It wasn't a dumb thing, certainly not to talk to them and to address them. Also in this society, women were considered to be inferior. And not only that, but Jews considered Samaritans to be inferior too. One of, the, one of the, um, the results of this feeling that the Samaritans were, were more inferior, were less than Jews, was, was that they actually couldn't share anything, any kind of eating receptacle. They wouldn't be able to share a cup or a plate or actually eat or drink with a Samaritan. And then there's the whole reason why this woman would be coming in the middle of the day. It must mean that not only is she a Samaritan and therefore looked down on by, by Jews, but presumably she must be looked down on by her Samaritan community too. Because otherwise she would have journeyed earlier in the day with the rest of the community. The only reason for her to go in the heat of the day was to avoid other people. This woman must have been an outcast within her society. So that's something of what's going on be behind the scenes here as we read this story. And the last thing this woman would have expected was for this Jewish man to ask her a question. Because actually Jesus was in effect putting himself in her debt. Jesus was asking to drink from something, one of her receptacles. But as we, we constantly discover, as we look at the gospel stories, as we look at these accounts of Jesus, that Jesus ignores convention. Jesus ignores prejudice. Jesus spends his time breaking down barriers. And Jesus constantly surprises the people around him. And he surprises this woman because he asks her a question. Will you give me a drink? Will you give me a drink? And the woman's reply says, you're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. How can you ask me for a drink? And then as we look at the rest of the passage, the conversation unfolds. And actually, we discover that a life-changing encounter unfolds. This woman, we believe, her life was never going to be the same again because of this meeting with Jesus. All are based around the question, the subject of thirst, and the subject of water. And as the conversation continues, Jesus reveals a deep thirst in this woman. Not a thirst for water, but a thirst for freedom, a thirst for acceptance, a thirst for belonging, a thirst to kind of recover the mess that her life is in. She has a very messy past, and she also must be very aware constantly, daily, of the prejudice she has to face, not only from Jewish people, but from her own society, her own people. And in this amazing conversation, Jesus begins to show her how to begin to move past these issues. Jesus tells her that freedom from these things can be found in him. He says this amazing statement, whoever drinks this water I give them will never be thirsty again. The water I give will become a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Throughout the Gospel of John, Jesus makes astounding claims about himself. He says things like, I am the light of the world. I am the bread of life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And in this passage he says, I am the living water. He's not talking about bread. He's not talking about light. He's not talking about water. He's talking in a way to explain something of his mission, something of why. 
this woman recognises him, him as, recognises him as the Messiah. He's trying to explain something of those things to the people around him. And as we move on in this story, we discover that perhaps the woman not only finds spiritual awakening, forgiveness, in her conversation with Jesus, but she also begins to find a new place in the community. We're not going to have a chance to do that this morning, but it might be good for you to read the rest of, of chapter 4 later in the day, or later this week. Because she rushes off to a community, this community which apparently she's been avoiding. And she goes into a community and she says to them, come, see a man who's told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Christ? And they follow her out of the town to come and find Jesus. And then later on we read that many in her village believe in Jesus, believe he's the Christ because of her message. And I wonder that if you'd gone back to her village later, you would have discovered that actually she was able to, to belong more to a community. That because Jesus had accepted her, she was found that she could be accepted again by her community and belong to a community. And in fact, she, she just gave her community such a gift in introducing them to Jesus. This is a story that happened over 2,000 years ago. But we believe in this place that Jesus is still about the same kind of work today. And this morning we've heard about how Jesus has been working in a remote Ugandan village, working through a partnership with Cheer Fund, but also the local church. We've heard the story of another girl as well, that girl called Stydia, who used to spend at least three hours a day fetching water for her, her family and her community. Water that wasn't really bringing life, that often was bringing disease, certainly the possibility of death. Water that meant that Stydia put herself in danger of being beaten up or even being raped on her way to the well, a dangerous journey. And through a meeting with, with Christians who were serving Jesus in that community, through their cooperation with Tear Fund, Stydia has now been freed from that danger, dangerous daily journey. She's been freed from the dangers of drinking possibly diseased water. And she's been freed to pursue an education. Later in, in the Gospel of John, John says about Jesus that Jesus said, I've come to give life and life to his full, life to its full. And that's the gospel message, that's the message that we believe in here, the Tear Fund believe in, um, that this church, this small community of Christians in Uganda believe in, our partners in Soroti believe in. We believe in a message that brings life, this holistic, it's about um, spiritual awareness and, and renewal, about forgiveness. Of, of the mess that many people have got their lives into, but also about meeting people's needs. This is the work of Jesus today, the work through agencies like Tear Fund, but also the work he wants to do through us. And I guess as well as the opportunity to give to the work of Tear Fund, as well as the opportunity this morning to thank God for the gift of, of so many amazing things and also the gift of water. Now I think the message this morning is for us to, to be aware of this message that we have to take with us wherever we go, this message of Jesus, to, to bring the living water to people. We have a message to take with us. And let's be aware in this week as we go about our, our lives, as we meet people, as we, we see the needs around us, as we, we are reminded and, and shown maybe by God of the thirst that people have for a variety of things, that Jesus wants to quench their thirst through us. Jesus says, whoever drinks the water I give them will never be thirsty again. The water I give will become a spring of water welling up to eternal life. We're going to come in and sing our last song together and it's a song that reminds us of the call that we all have to serve the kingdom of God. Um, we're also going to take up our offering. In your bulletins you had this little leaflet, this little leaflet from Tear Fund and there are two ways that you can respond this morning to the message. Um, you can actually put some money in, in the envelope and put the envelope in the offering basket. You can also take this away and, and bring it back next week. That will be fine too. So there's two opportunities to give. One to give this week, but one to take the envelope away and bring it back next week and put it in the offering. But there's also a way that you can, you can help have an influence over the politics of our world. There's a... If you open it up, there's actually a, a, a card inside 
that you can bring back to the, 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 the church office and we'll send on to Tier Fund a card that they actually we're going to send to the Prime Minister.